Hello, everyone. Welcome to All Things College and Career, the podcast to turn to for all of your college and career planning needs. We are your hosts, Meg Gary and Bobby Ryan, owners of Academic and Career Advising Services located in Kennebunk, Maine. We started this podcast to provide helpful information to listeners researching careers, colleges, or academic majors. Choosing your career or a college is such a big decision, which is why our motto is learn before you leap. Before investing a lot of time or money, it's so important to do your research and to really explore your options. Each podcast will offer interesting stories and valuable insights that we think you will find entertaining and informative. Subscribe to our podcast and you'll have it ready to go on your playlist every Monday morning. So learn before you leap each week with us. Our guest today is Aaron Moore from Mercy Street Studio in South Berwick, Maine. Erin has been behind the lens since her junior year in high school. She started her career in human resource, but a major event in her life led her to become a photographer as a profession, eventually making it a full-time career and later opening up a studio. She has two employees and offers many options for portraiture for all ages. If you are interested in a career as a photographer, you will find this podcast with Erin very informative. She talks about how she got started, what types of challenges and joys she receives from her job, what type of services she provides, how she incorporates her love for art to become even more creative in her field. She's smart, kind, a mother of four, and highly respected in her field and her community. Let's get on to our conversation with Erin. Hello, Erin. Welcome to All Things College and Career. Thank you so much for doing the podcast today. Well, thank you for having me. Welcome, Erin. I'm a big fan of your work, so I'm so happy you're on our podcast today. Oh, thank you, Bobby. So, hey, listen, before we get into how you started your career, tell us three things you love about your job as a photographer and owner of Mercy Street Studio. Oh, that's a good question. Um, The three (laughs) things I think I love most are uh, meeting people, which is one of those things that I didn't realize as a photographer that it would be so relational. So meeting people and and watching their families grow and going through like life with them. It's really, really cool. And I love the, you know, the creative expression. I love being an artist and I love being creative and having an outlet. And then the third thing, oh gosh. (laughs) <laughs> when you pick the third thing, it boxes you into like the top three. So yeah, right. probably the third thing would be uh, just the flexibility. I like having sure. the flexibility in my schedule. Um, oh, that's so important, especially as a mom. And yeah, mm-hmm, that's huge. And we have as viewers of your website and Facebook page have seen your families grow up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, we've seen the moms and then their babies come like the maternity photos and yeah. then the baby. Mom. I can see how up that's to really the tweens and friends and beyond. Sometimes it feels like our Facebook page is a community in and of itself. Because, it is. You know, people yeah. are recognizing or waiting on somebody's baby to arrive. And, oh, that's the mother that we saw the picture of. And um, and then, you know, another sibling comes a couple of years later and people comment and like. And it's very, it's to me, it's a happy place. It's a place where mm-hmm. people encourage each other and say really kind things to strangers, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. That is interesting that it has that aspect to it that you never would have imagined no. when you started becoming a photographer. So anyway, I just want to get a little background. Can you tell us about your college years? You'd mentioned um, that it was a bit non-traditional, which interests us a lot because I think a lot of people have non-traditional roots. In fact, I think more do than do not. And I think it's important for people to see that you can be successful and have a whole and full life if you don't select a traditional route. And so I was wondering if you might not mind talking a bit about your road. Yes, I would love to, to sort of dial back the clock a couple of years, but yeah. yeah. (laughs) So I guess it really starts for me. It started junior year in high school when the guidance counselor handed me like the form that I had Mm -hmm. to sort of select what I wanted to do with my life. And I remember putting down photojournalism. No way. Yeah, as as a major. I liked taking pictures in high school and I liked writing. I was an avid writer. And I didn't know what photojournalism was, but I knew photo and I knew journalism. And I was like, (laughs) well, 
I think I want to do that. <laughs> Whatever, right. that, is. Whatever so, that is, sounds great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that was my junior in high school. And I really, I honestly didn't know what, it, what the job was. And I think somewhere between junior and senior year, I realized, I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah. I know the two words independently, and I like the two words independently, but I don't know what a photojournalist would do. Right. And I didn't really have a resource, I don't think, to help me, like, figure that out. Mm -hmm. And so when it came time to go to college, I ended up going to UNH my first year. I have to take this opportunity to say, had you had this podcast, <laughs> yeah. you, might have, you yeah. might have come across this career, but go ahead. You're right. You're right. I went on to undeclared major. I started at UNH and during that first year, I took a nutrition class, mm -hmm. which I really loved nutrition. I worked in a health club, a fitness club throughout high school and some of my college summers and I fell in love with nutrition. I was like, oh, I'm going to study nutrition now. <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, you know how it is when you take that first class that you really love in college, you're like, oh, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. You have an amazing professor that yeah. inspires you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I started into nutrition as a major and I ended up switching and going to just because I was a free spirit and my parents allowed it. Um, I went to UMaine the next year. And mm -hmm. uh, I went into, you know, got into the sciences and continued sort of knocking out sciences that were required for nutrition. And then the third year, I decided, again, I wanted to switch colleges because, again, I was a free spirit. My parents allowed <laughs> it for some reason. Uh, and I went to UMass Amherst and I figured I'd do all the state universities in New England. <laughs> right. right. You missed you missed GVM and URI, but, I other, did. <laughs> but in, uh, UConn, but other than that, you exactly. did quite well. <laughs> and uh, so then the, that third year, we were getting into organic chemistry. And that was uh, where I was like, oh, I don't know if I like nutrition anymore. Yeah. I, I, you know, I like talking about food science and that sort of thing, but I did not like doing math. And I did not like organic chemistry and talking about compounds and all of that stuff. So uh, I ended up Well, uh, I, was, I was unaware that that was a requirement for nutrition. Yeah, I was wow. too. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And yeah, so I, I didn't like it. And I ended up failing that class and then talking to my parents about maybe taking a gap year. Like, you know, I had right. been to three colleges in three years, wasn't sure I wanted to continue nutrition. And my parents were like, okay, <laughs> maybe your come home. Great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe come home. So I, yeah. uh, I went home and I took a gap year and that year lasted, I guess, 10 years. Um, yeah. Yep. Because I didn't go back. I, I started working and I got a job as a recruiter, which was a job I could get, you know, without a college degree and recruiting yeah people to work and matching people with jobs. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, once I, I was recruiting at an agency and then got a job recruiting at a company mm -hmm. and then within their HR department. And then from there, really started to enjoy working in HR and seeing the other aspects of HR. That's so interesting how you, you just sort of fell into that career completely yeah. unrelated to nutrition. And that happens yeah. to so many people. But I was wondering if I could just ask you a couple of questions yeah. about HR, because obviously we work with clients that are looking for careers. And I'm always mm -hmm. interested to talk with HR people. And, and I know it's been a while for you, but what appealed to you when people are looking for a job? Like, would you have any tips for people seeking jobs as an HR person? Yeah, I think so. I think having uh, confidence is is attractive mm -hmm. to hiring managers, somebody that's confident, but also, you know, not overly confident where they come across thinking they know everything. Okay. <laughs> you know, an eager, someone who's eager and an eager learner is attractive. You know, we do look at people's sort of work history and their background. Mm -hmm. That's important maybe not jumping around so much, you know, from job to job, um, somebody that has some longevity in their employment. You know, if you see somebody who, for example, for a college student, maybe they work at the same place every summer, mm -hmm. um, that tells a story that they were welcomed back and valued as an employee year after year. Interesting. Um, right. Yeah. right. It bodes well for you to be able to depend on a, an employee for more than five minutes. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So when you were talking about those HR experiences, Erin, are these are the companies that you that you have on your LinkedIn, which are Health Dialogue and before that Cardinal Health or would yeah. those come, did those come later? No, I was at Cardinal Health when I got my bachelor's. I went back to school and uh, they offered a tuition assistance program and I, I had three years under my belt. Mm -hmm. it, so I didn't, it wasn't a ton that I had to do to get my bachelor's. I did have at that point two toddlers oh, oh, <laughs> and wow. I was working full time. Wow. And so wow. maybe not the easiest, but um, yeah. I got it done. I would do How did you, lunch. how did you do that? Aaron, two toddlers, yeah. full-time job, plus going to school. That's, that's a lot. That's amazing. Yeah. 
yeah, I look back and I'm like, wow, how did I do that? Right. <laughs> um, but I used to do score. First of all, I went online. I finished online. Okay. So that was that huge. I didn't have to go and sit in a class, you know, right. three nights a week. I and went drive I, there yeah. and drive back. And yeah. Put, you know, yeah. That's it. So I would do work from my desk at work, like during my lunch hour. Mm -hmm. And I would, once my kids went to bed at like seven or eight at night, I would go on the computer and write my papers and do what I had to do. So it worked out perfectly. And I ended up getting my degree in something that was applicable to my career because I was already working in that field and it opened up some doors for me. Did you find it helpful to actually be working in the field or industry when you were going to grad school and yeah you could everything you learned you either you kind of you had experience you had seen it firsthand you knew some of the stuff already Mm -hmm. because yeah you had experience it and I ended up going right back from my master's during that same time and fun funny story my mom begged me not to go back because I found out I was pregnant right after I signed up for my master's so now I had two little kids right. three and four and a baby on the way wow. and oh my, my goodness. master's and working full-time oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah uh, but yeah I ended up doing really well because it was so second nature to me because I was working in the field I mean I graduated with a 4.0 like it, there was I, it was wow. just it was easy so was easy. in some ways I you know that might be something for listeners to consider that sometimes it's actually good to be in the field when you're working on that degree yeah when I wrote papers it was I was writing with experience do you know what exactly. I mean I had my own experiences to share right um, as I was writing papers and you probably had so much to draw upon whereas if you're just a student you haven't been yeah. there and worked it yet so without any prior experience it must be really a challenge it was and when you go to school online they have a lot of discussion boards that sort of take the place of classroom conversations mm-hmm. And I was able to bring so much to those oh, I bet. Um, discussion boards because yeah. we had so much. I mean, HR is a very interesting field yeah. <laughs> where you have a lot of interesting scenarios that happen and that crop up uh, with, within the context of the work environment. So, yeah. Was- and also, if you have like a big projects or assignments assigned to you, you can probably use your current career and apply a project to you you are- know, use your career for the project. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So Could it's like killing two birds with one stone. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It yeah. Was, was really yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So for your undergrad, then it was Bellevue, which yes. is the unit. Yeah, which is in um, Bellevue, Nebraska, just outside of Omaha, right? Yeah. And so it was online. So yep. you probably can't tell us much about the campus and no. the school itself, but you felt like they were great for an online They were fantastic. And the one thing that every Bellevue University um, student has to do, which I really appreciated, and maybe it was because I was, you know, in my late 20s when I went, but they have this course that it's a brick and mortar school. So every everybody that goes to the university physically and the people that go online have to do this Kirkpatrick series class, which is like a 12 week class. And it's basically to make you a well-rounded individual. Hmm. And I found that class so fascinating. I mean, we were reading like Abigail Adams letters. We were studying different religions of the world. It was just Mm. a, a class that they require of every single person that goes there. And it just made me feel smarter (laughs) and things I I hadn't known about or hadn't read about before. It just forces you to read about things that you can have, you know, you can have an intelligent conversation about government or about religion or about, so it it was, it was, it was sort of nonpartisan and non, it wasn't slanting any kind of way. It was truly informational, but I really appreciated that about Bellevue University. (laughs) And I think things like that, a uh, smaller or large school try to do that and a lot of schools try to do this. You never know when those things are going to crop up in your life that yeah. it help you in some way. And as you just say, sometimes just in conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah. But those things can become applicable down the road and manifest themselves in ways that you never expected at the time. Exactly. Yeah. Make us all better thinkers. But it, then, really did. Definitely, <laughs> it really did. It probably even helps you to be a better photographer because you just can see things, you know, yeah. you just bring yeah. more to the table. And, but anyway, would you like to tell us just a bit about Troy University, where you get your master's degree in Troy, Alabama? That was an online curriculum yeah. as well. So, so. Yeah, again, yep. I was pregnant with uh, my third with two toddlers at home. So I did a lot of that. It was all online. I never went step foot in the university. It is another, it's a brick and mortar school. It's a big university. Mm-hmm. And their online program is really robust. There's a lot of military folks that uh, attend Troy University online because they're stationed all over the world. So right. it's interesting to interact with those folks as well. Um, but it was a great 
master's program. It was well-rounded. We did have to go and take our tests. Our tests had to be proctored, which was good. It's mm-hmm. good. So I, yeah. I lived near Temple University at the time in Philadelphia. So I used to go into Temple University and have like the receptionist there proctor my tests. Wow. Um, nice. Just, yeah, to make sure I wasn't you know, bring, you know, cheating, I guess. Right. But um, it was a great program. I learned a lot and I enjoyed it. And that's a great option for so many people. You know, I feel like, especially like you said, military people, but also moms. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to do it. I mean, I was literally in the hospital having a baby and writing papers. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I, I mean, I remember nursing with one hand, having a baby nursing and typing with my oh, other my hand. Gosh. Right. Um, and I wouldn't probably have been were able to... typing too, because <laughs> I were. We used to, I was a great one hand typist wow. and had papers and books all over the floor and like the little bouncy yep. chair for the oh, baby. My yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So then the times. happiest person ever when you finally got that master's degree and you were done. Yeah. 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 Like, oh yeah, my gosh. Good. How long did it take you, Erin? To- it was, I feel like it was an accelerated program. Like it took me two years, but mm-hmm. um, the classes went by quickly. It was like one at a time, but in an accelerated way. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and at the time, this is funny too. At the time I actually was moving, we moved from Pennsylvania up here to Maine and I did my final like comp. You can either have a thesis or a comp test, right? So we, I did a comp test and it was like a six hour test. And I did that at the Elliott library. Wow. No <laughs> right <way. here>. yeah. <laughs> Elliott, Maine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they proctored my test, but yeah, six hours sitting in there writing a paper by hand. Wow. That's <laughs> yeah. tough. Wow. Yeah. You must have good penmanship. I always say, if I had to do a, a written essay, they would fail me. Over yeah, the it would not be good. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Meg can tell yeah. you. I, not a good I scene. I hate to say it, but it would not be good. <laughs> Oh my. I should have been a doctor. There are no yeah, bad exactly. penalties, right? You would have fit right in. <laughs> yeah. Thank God for typing now. Yeah. Right? Oh gosh, it, it saves me. Yeah. It's awful. And my poor son Christian has inherited my horrible. Hand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, handwriting is becoming a lost art, isn't yeah, it? Well, I think it so. Really is. <laughs> it is. So, but anyway, well, moving on. Tell us how you first got into photography. I mean, you were a junior in high school and you took photos, but. Yeah. yeah. Start there or you can move. Yeah. No, I, I think I always enjoyed taking pictures like a lot of people do. I mean, you know, everybody has a camera and now everyone has a phone, right? So right. Um, most people have their own personal cameras. And so I did enjoy taking pictures and I took pictures of my kids and it was something that I enjoyed, but never, you know, I was, I was really happy working in HR. I wasn't like looking to change mm-hmm. my career. I just enjoyed taking pictures as a hobby and I loved my work and I feel like I did really well <laughs> in HR and it, yeah. was, it was great. So I wasn't looking and I think it started with our adoption. We actually, uh, nine years ago, I went to Africa. No, it was 10 years ago now. And I met a little boy in an mm-hmm. orphanage and I was like, oh, I need to bring him home. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, it How, wasn't that easy though. on that trip? It was a missions trip. We were mm-hmm. just going to like meet with kids in orphanages and was the idea was was to match orphanages in Africa, and we were in Ethiopia, with organizations here in America that would sponsor them. So you probably heard of like Compassion International, where they have like person-to-person sponsorships. Well, this organization that I went with did organization to organization. So you know, people of one organization would all sponsor kids at one orphanage. Mm-hmm. So it just be sort of more community. So I was going to be part of that and potentially match my church, which is Elliott Baptist Church here in Elliott, with an, an orphanage in Ethiopia. And when I went, I met this little boy, ironically, not at the orphanage that ended up matching with my church, but (laughs) yeah. And he, you know, I came home and told my husband, I'm like, oh, we have to adopt this little boy. And my husband was like, do we? He stole your heart. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Don't we have three kids? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And and you're not supposed to adopt an oldest. That's sort of like an unwritten, you're so in the adoption world, they want you to continue with the natural birth order. So they encourage you to adopt the youngest. Right. So uh, but we, but I'd already met this little boy and I was like, oh, I, I think we need to adopt him. Was, right. was so, he, just knew. how old was he when you met him? He was 12. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So, he was 12. so he would have been your oldest child. Yeah. And, uh, so you were going out of order. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was kind of a thing. So how did that go with your three children at home when he brought him home? Yeah, I think it went okay. I think it was hardest probably for our oldest son who was already, he was the only boy and he was the oldest. So he was right. sort of getting he was used to having that role of I'm in charge here. <laughs> no. Yeah, so I think it, 
probably uh, you know s- sort of suffered the most, yeah. but um, the other t- the other girl the, the girls are younger. They were like you know what's one brother two brother three brother more yeah. you know they they were in their own <laughs> yeah. worlds. But uh, yeah, I think you know he came over at fifteen. Actually, he was fifteen when he got here. Oh, wow, it took March three years to. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It took. It probably took a year to convince my husband, and then another <laughs> year for the adoption to go through. Uh, but during that time, I would go and visit oh, him in, yeah. in Africa. And actually, our oldest son and my husband both went to meet him and visit oh. him too. So we definitely kept in touch. Such a nice thing to adopt an older child too, because yeah. I'm sure they're harder to adopt. Yeah, uh, teenage boys are the least adopted. Yeah, so, so that's. The greatest uh, need then, good. right? Yeah, 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 it is. And so he was really sweet. But it, the, how we ended up sort of the picture correlation to the adoption was just that I started doing like f- pictures for fundraising for our adoption or the international adoption is twenty five to $30,000. Oh, wow. So it's, yeah. So it was something that I was like, well, people liked my pictures that I just took of my own kids. And a couple of people had asked me to take pictures of their kids, just, mm-hmm. you know, they had seen pictures that I had taken of my own. So I figured, well, I could probably just do an adoption fundraiser, you know, and just put that money aside t- and put it towards our adoption. So I would just do pictures and people would make a donation to a separate account that I had set up. They just basically opened up a fund for adoptions that people can make tax deductible donations to. And then when you need the money for an adoption related expense, they just kind of write the check and pay the bill for you. So so I would take pictures and then people write the check to the name of that donation, which escapes me. And then, (laughs) uh, and then we would have the money when we needed it. So that's how I started taking pictures for other people. So it's kind of like your son is what brought you into this whole. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's all and, meant yeah. to be, right? Yeah. Yeah. Crazy because I never planned on being a photographer. You know, I was very content in my career. Yeah. And, that's, it wasn't um, like you were looking to get out. It just happened no. sort of organically. It sure yeah. did. And that's the thing. It's like the, the phone never stopped ringing. That's what I tell people. It's like, well, I started taking pictures and we were, you know, raising money for adoption. And then we brought our son home and then it just continued. Like people the, just the, kept, the business like, continued. Yeah. People told you, guess what? You are going to be a photographer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. the ultimate compliment, though, right? That's a true yeah. sign that you really have a gift for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then ended up, you know, leaving Health Dialogue. How long did it take you before you made that transition from the time you had the fundraiser to the time you decided to? It was probably a couple of years, probably two years. And then when I left, I ended up going back as a contractor. So working part-time in HR, right. but doing full-time photography. So it was kind of just flipped for, I was on a project for like a year and a half, which was a really nice segue for me. Yeah. It must have been a big decision to let go such a good job. Yeah. 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 It, it was a big job. It was well-paying. So yeah, but it, it, it sort of worked out. It all just seemed right. So yeah. are you completely self-taught or have you taken classes or how did that work out for you? Yep. I take a lot of classes. I still <laughs> to this day take class. I love learning. It's probably part of my HR background that has helped me with uh, photography that, you know, professional development is something that's really important to mm-hmm. me. So I take classes all the time and I take them online, <laughs> mostly. Well, you've had a lot of luck with that. Oh yeah, there's God. so many resources. You don't even have to leave your house. But yeah, yeah. I, both self-taught. And I practice a lot and I play a lot and I learn a lot. Every time we go on vacation, that's what I do on flights. I just, I, I look for like training videos to download onto my phone. And, I, and I'm not big on movies and TV, but I watch a lot of training. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, so you're totally passionate about your field and your career. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So what is it like running a photography business? Yeah. So one of the things about it uh, that's tricky that you don't, again, realize until you do it is very seasonal work. Mm-hmm. So you sort of have yeah. to, you know, sort of budget, right? Um, it's, that's true because a lot of people, is, you know, weddings and graduations and senior pictures it's, everybody wants to be outdoors yeah, yeah so it's heavily slanted towards especially here in New England summer and particularly mm. fall so February March <laughs> right. not so much right and right. especially if you don't have a studio which a lot of photographers don't have a studio so there's really you know not a lot of opportunity outside it's you know 20 degrees or 5 degrees right. or whatever it is and uh, it's not a time of year that people are thinking about bundling up the kids and right 
going to stand out in the snow. So it's it's very much a uh, seasonal type work. We have three photographers at the studio, and one of them is dedicated to taking newborn pictures, which is not seasonal. Babies are born all year, so that's kind of nice for her. <laughs> More steady. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, within the portraiture realm, right? You have you know sure. newborn photography, which is, yeah, it's just year-round work. And she it's nice because it fits within the mom hours of, you know, 9 to 3. She usually schedules her sessions at 10 a.m., and she's out of there by 1. Wow. And those baby photos are amazing. I mean, you've yeah. always done them, but now you have Sarah doing them. She's, yeah, she's so gifted. She's, she's the baby whisperer. She <laughs> really is. She really is. She's amazing. Uh, and her work is just, it's, it's so beautiful. Gorgeous. We're so blessed to have yeah. her at our studio because she's so gifted. Yeah. They're, um, they're unlike on the beautiful. others I've seen. They're beautiful. Yeah. Their baby is art, really. It's, it's artwork. Full disclosure, Sarah did Meg's grandson. She did. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And he was, he was not actually a newborn well he was like eight or nine weeks old I think yeah oh, I can't remember yeah. the exact age but he was definitely not as young as they normally are but right and not tiny either yeah you know, he was a good yeah but she managed yeah. <laughs> amazingly she's, she's amazing yeah, yeah. It really is. was a little agitated. I've never seen a baby just calm down, relax. I mean, she got him to shut his eyes just by like rushing over the top. <laughs> yeah, of the- yeah. <laughs> it's magic. Yeah. And all of a sudden he was just like, oh, like he was in heaven. It must have just swaddling. And yeah, it has a way for sure. She does. It's a gift. And that's all she does. That's her job. She just does newborns and she's just so good at it. She really mm-hmm. is gifted. And then there's Lynn who does our family photography mm-hmm. and she does, she also does boudoir photography for us and she does fresh 48s which is a different kind of newborn photography where she goes into the hospital or someone's home right after they have a baby and just shoots everybody like together you know photographs the family together so she does that and she photographs a lot of families for us throughout the summer and fall and then I do just all the other portraiture obviously high school seniors and headshots for businesses family photographs as well we have well, we, family is sort of the bulk of our business, so that's why they're, it's myself and mm-hmm. Lynn both photograph families. Um, we don't photograph any weddings. We don't do weddings. Um, I know a lot of times people assume the first thing that they say is, oh, you're a photographer. Oh, you shoot weddings. Like, oh, we don't. We actually don't yeah. shoot weddings. You choose not to shoot weddings because it's more complicated or just not interesting to you? How? Yeah. What? Oh, check, check. And yes, and now, yeah. <laughs> busy every Saturday with wedding or yeah, a lot of. We don't need to shoot. Yeah, we shoot portraiture. Yeah. So we don't really need to shoot weddings. Right. And, you know, probably something having to do with me as it being my second career. I didn't feel like I needed to do it all to do it. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, you get older and you're like, hey, I don't want to do that. I'm not right. going right. to. I'm going to do what um, I enjoy and yeah. I'm going to do it well, but that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And we're happy to refer to other photographers who specialize and right. weddings. Do you know what right. I mean? Right. So you have some so good referral sources. Yeah. Yeah. We're connected to so many photographers in our area. We're part of the main PPA and we're part of a smaller local group. So we're all, photographers are all oh, friends. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's really nice. Yeah. So I also noticed that you do maternity and tweens and friends. So I didn't know if it yeah. was you or Lynn or. Nope. That's usually me. Lynn will do it too. It depends on, you know, the day and who's available and that sort of thing. But yeah, I shoot a lot of the tweens. Um, so and cute. Then Lynn, it, it, they're yeah. so cute. It's such a great time to capture right. kids. And I made a point to do it with my own girls because you know, especially if you're a woman, you know, there's a point where it's you go from girl to like teenager and it's like this really subtle shift around 12 or 13 where they're a little right. girl yeah. and then you blink yeah. one day and it's like oh my gosh they're not that little oh, girl no. anymore they're like a teenager and so I know I made it a point for my both of my girls to shoot them as a little girl like white dresses yeah. right at that brink like the summer before seventh grade you know oh. and um yeah Just before, like too they become too self-conscious you know that yeah they, no you know no it's not cool that's right you know what yeah. I mean um, before they got too cool, I was able right. to snag them as little girls, <laughs> um, which was really important for me. And, you know, I love when parents have us do that for their kids too, because there's a point, it's around 13 where they get a little too cool, yeah. for, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah mom, I'm not doing that. Or, right. Yeah, yeah. But right around 10, 11, 12, they're still very much, you know, into it. And it's just, 
capturing that little window of time so that before fun. it goes away. And the maternity photos yeah. are beautiful too. Yeah, that's really, it's a passion too, because again, it's it's those fleeting right. moments, I think that really. And no, I wish I had all those. I, I wish too. I had yeah. someone in me when too. I had my babies <laughs> and then I wish I had those newborn yeah. photos. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you guys wish- too and maternity photos. I wish I had them all, but. Me too. I always say, I wish I could stick my kids in a time capsule exactly. and go back and have Sarah photograph them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's those fleeting moments that are just really, to me, just the sweetest part of our job is being a little bit of a historian for a family yeah. and capturing those things that you just, you don't get them back, you know, they might seem like every day because you're, you know, you're pregnant for nine months and you get tired of being pregnant. But, you know, when you're our age or, or even is. younger, you look back and you're like, oh, I wish I had a picture of my you're pregnant right. self, yeah. you know. And then when you're nine months pregnant or eight months whenever you do this photo shoot you just feel mm-hmm. enormous and oh yeah. I don't want a picture and yeah exactly. and but thinking back I'm like gosh you know yeah yeah we try I always that. tell people we don't get better like and uh, just right. get in the picture now because we're not getting better <laughs> as we age you know it's like what are you waiting for <laughs> I thought, I'm like geez I should have been celebrating myself back. yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, instead of being self-conscious in any way exactly. or not. yeah well, I know. Enough if you could enjoy those times when you're in them. Oh gosh. So I'm curious about if you have a favorite camera or a favorite line of cameras that that you use. Uh, Some people just are like true Canon people and they don't use anything else. Yeah. So I use a Nikon. I shoot with Nikon, but only because that was the first thing I shot with. And I think I just, once you start investing in lenses, you, it's hard to make the switch. I know Lynn shoots with a Canon. She works for our studio and Sarah shoots with a Nikon. We, we don't have brand preferences. We just shoot with what Mm -hmm. we have. Right. As you say, once you start with one and you buy the lenses, it's kind of like, it's so expensive to switch. It My is. husband it's does a little fine. photography, nothing like you, just for himself, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but mm-hmm. um, that was that was his big thing. Yeah, it's always like the grass is greener. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think Canon users want like are like, oh, I wish I had a Nikon. And Nikon users are like, oh, I wish I had a Canon, just because you know they each have their own sort of pros and cons. Mm, sure, but, right, like yeah. anything, right? But yeah, I'm very happy with my camera. I use a Nikon D850. Sometimes okay. people ask me what I shoot no, with. No, so that's, that's what I was going to ask you next. So which Nikon yeah. do you use? So D850, yep. okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Before that, I had the 800, and before that, I had the 700, which I really, really loved. That was my baby. But, you know, cameras uh, are like cars in, in terms of mileage. Do you know what I mean? They have yeah. clicks. And so oh, once really? you get to, yeah, shutter that. counts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, once you get to around 200,000 shutter counts, yeah, it starts. they yep. start to like, you know, wear a little bit. So, yeah, I had to retire her. I still have her. Like, I couldn't, like, trade her in. I still have that camera that first <laughs> yeah. professional camera. I just love it. Mm-hmm. But um, you can make a little showcase of all your history of cameras or something. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm actually, I'm sitting here in my home office. I'm surrounded by cameras. Every year, my husband buys me a an old, a vintage oh. camera. So I have like all kinds of cameras oh, all around me at all times. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, it is. Do you is. have a favorite thing to shoot, like high school seniors or families? or? Yeah, I, well, I... Mm. It's like when you're, if you ask me when I'm shooting yeah. them, yeah, I really do love um, sh- photographing high school seniors. I, I really, that's probably uh, my favorite. It's just, they're at a time and it's just that they're so fun, yeah. one. And they're also at a time where, um, to me, if you can make somebody feel beautiful yeah. and like, and good about themselves, it's it's awesome. It's a, yeah. that's it's very satisfying to me. And I feel like girls nowadays, they're, they're just hit with so much in terms of keeping up with social media images and that sort of thing. And I love when I can show them the back of my camera and it's just a picture that I took and they're like, that's me, uh, you know, and it hasn't uh, been photoshopped and it hasn't been, it's like, they're just looking at themselves through the way I photograph uh, them and they, they're seeing themselves as being beautiful. Do you see the beauty in everyone? I do. I do. I see everyone is beautiful. I, I am so drawn to portraiture and to faces. I, it's the only thing that I can really photograph. I, mm. I'm not interested in photographing sunsets mm. or landscapes or barns or right. ocean or anything like that. I'm really drawn to people and uh, I love photographing faces and I, I'm a person that is very rooted in her faith and so like I believe that people are created in the image of God and I, I feel like I see that beauty in every single mm-hmm. person so um, I love that. it's yeah. just I'm so drawn to people's faces mm-hmm. yeah yeah I love that too I can see that I mean plus people are just interesting yeah <laughs> I, yeah. My, I always yeah. often think thank God we're 
we don't all look alike or we don't all have the same personalities yeah. because it's what makes life interesting that we are also different. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's it's really awesome. And to explore that in, in the realm of portraiture is really yeah. fun. So have you ever had to work, and I'm sure you have, with a person that's hard to photograph or a challenging customer? Oh, yeah. So how, oh, yeah. how do you manage that? Every 18 month old that comes to the <laughs> door well, yeah. is your hardest right. core. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, certainly, probably in every way. I mean, you have dads that don't want to be part yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> like their wives yeah, have dragged them, them and they're just a little grumpy yeah. sometimes. You have, yeah, kids that are shy or tired. Yeah cranky or don't want to let go of mom yeah. you know you have teenage boys yeah <laughs> not your son Bobby but yeah no I think I told you when I was photographing him that he's he was like he was great and I'm like well this is really great <laughs> yeah. a guy that wants to be photographed because kidding? my boys were not so gracious mm-hmm. my own ch- boys he, he were... was just upset when it was over <laughs> <laughs> yeah he, he was it's awesome. sun's down but I think we can get a couple more <laughs> <laughs> exactly he was oh, great so funny. um but yeah a lot of times teenage boys don't really like it I, I have a lot of moms that show up and like their sons have made, put them in tears on the way oh. to see a portrait shoot just because they didn't oh, want to do gosh. it and uh but when they show up they're usually fine to me um right. but it's just not their favorite right. thing yeah. so yeah we definitely see a lot of people that are just not into it and are kind of being coerced but so. it's nothing that they'll ever regret do you oh. know what I mean and I think we know that we're providing something that one day they're going to look back and be it's so, so true. And I always have. tell my family that because they're always pushing back. Oh, yes. don't get a picture. This is true. Meg's like, let's get yeah. a family picture. And they're like, oh, no, no, nobody yeah. ever wants to do it. But then they're always asking me for like pictures from, you know, memories yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And you enjoy them so much looking back at them. But in the moment, nobody wants to be bothered. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's so true. It's so true. We don't take offense to that. We show up a lot of times. I'm like, you know, welcome to your worst nightmare. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll try to make it. Pay. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, people are, are in it. So I don't want to paint it, a picture that it's all dismal. No, but, no, we know it's just, but you're going to get every once in a while, a difficult customer. <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah, all the time, especially the little ones. You just, you know, yeah, they don't know. Right. So we, I usually spend a lot of time playing with kids. Oh, kind of put them at ease. Yeah, yeah. We take some pictures and then we play some games that I make up on the <laughs> yeah. fly, and then we take some more pictures. And uh, yeah, it, it's an interesting job. It's different than what maybe you think. You know that you just take right. pictures. Right. No, there's a there's lot a more lot to it. Yeah. Who, yeah, a lot of people skill involved. Yeah, a lot of thinking on the fly, especially like working with all the personalities. You really have to be thick skinned a little bit because it's never about us. Right. It's never because, again, when you have people that show up to a photo shoot and they don't want to do it and it's obvious or there's been tension on the way to yeah. the shoot. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm telling you, there have been many times where moms are wiping tears from their eyes I because bet. they're stressed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They have kids in clothes that they didn't yeah. wear. <laughs> and it's, 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 you know, they're investing a lot of money to have their family portrait and they want it to come out a certain right. way and that's stressful especially when you're dealing with humans that don't yeah. want to and so just getting them from a place where they're literally coming out of the car in tears and getting them to a place where they're exuding happiness I think your and, HR skills probably come into play there. I think you're right Gosh, I think that, you're absolutely right such a talent though but probably also being a mom right. of four you can negotiate that oh that's true too yeah yeah yeah. And the thing is, and... yeah all three of us are moms and we've all been there with our own kids sure. you know sometimes moms are embarrassed because their kids are screaming or right. freaking out and right. all of us just are like yeah, yeah. we've been there we get it don't worry about it it truly is we and, we and you can't ruffle our feathers I think we're all cut from the same cloth where it's like you can't we don't really get frazzled at all we have infinite oh, patience wow. that's a it's great like, quality, that a great quality. Yeah. and yeah. so we know you have been featured on book covers and in numerous magazines and even on national television. So can you tell us about those accomplishments? Yeah, yeah maybe not me personally, but my pictures <laughs> have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. So we, well, we've taken pictures of the you know, authors that appear on books. Our pictures have gone into uh, teen magazines. I've written articles for how to photograph tweens and teens. And yeah, we were featured last year in a creative uh, magazine. It was a creative portrait shoot that we did that was featured. Oh. It was really cool. It was, yeah, just working 
working with another creative artist who did some headpieces and some elaborate hair and makeup. So our work went into a magazine yeah, just last year. And Do you want to mention the magazine in case anybody wants to check it out? It's called Where Women Create uh-huh. Work. It was autumn 2018. So yeah, just last fall. Okay, Where Women Create Work, if anybody wants to check that out. Yeah, I love opportunities to be super creative. And generally, that's how I fill my slower season, how I was mentioning it. You know, we work around the clock in the summer and the I fall. Bet. Like really, there's no vacation. There's no days off. I literally start when I wake up and I end like when I'm too tired to sit at the wow. computer anymore. Mm. And and then in December, I quit. Right. <laughs> I usually take the whole month of December oh, nice. off. Right. You need and it. Then, <laughs> yeah. It's well deserved. Yeah. True. Yes. Truly. Yeah. And then in uh, January, we come back at just a slower pace. I use that as an opportunity to try new things and to express myself creatively. Sounds like a really nice balance. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, I'm sorry, but yeah. you were about yeah. to say you really love. Yeah, no, love to okay. create and I love to express myself creatively. So it gives me an opportunity to do that and to get involved in some passion projects. You were also named Maine's 2008 Portrait Photographer of the Year. 2018. Oh, yeah, last year. <laughs> Yeah, yep, 2018. 2018. Did I say 2008? Yes, she did. <laughs> you want to read? I'm trying to take 10 years off my life, Erin. I'm trying to. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, that that's quite an honor. Yeah, that was a surprise. I didn't even know that honor existed, to be honest. I had sent in some pictures to the main PPA, which is the main chapter of the Professional Photographer Association, which is an international organization. And every year they do a print competition. And I sent some of my prints in and yeah, I was surprised when I was named Portrait Photographer oh, of the Year. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. That's an amazing yeah. honor. You also uh, teach some photography. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. I love teaching. I do a class. I call it Photo Mama and we do it in uh, March of every year. And it's really geared at helping people discover how to use their cameras. A lot of people have, I call them the big girl cameras, you know, the (laughs) (laughs) not the iPhone, (laughs) not the iPhone, uh, the camera that you can take the lens off of, uh, but they use them as point and shoots um, because they don't know all all the adjustments and how to utilize the camera to take a picture and utilize some of the functionality that is inherent in a bigger camera. You know, if mm-hmm. if you're just using it as a point and shoot, you might as well just be carrying around a smaller point and shoot, right? right. So we do a workshop. It's very hands-on and teach them the basics of photography. And, you know, we have them making adjustments on their camera. And by the end of the day, they can shoot their camera in manual mode <laughs> and create the picture that they oh, have envisioned. That's awesome. and, so if somebody was interested, yeah. they could find information on that on your website? Yeah, they could sign up we open up the signups early so people can ask for it for birthdays and mother's day and oh yeah that's a great gift idea yeah Yeah, for moms yeah Mm -hmm. or for dads we've had teenagers in the class we've had dads uncles aunts moms it's called photo mama but it's It's really for everyone yeah Yeah. (laughs) you're the photo mama (laughs) yeah maybe it really is i really am that's right so what about mentors who are your mentors who do you look up to in the industry i love sue bryce i'm part of her educational group she's a phenomenal portrait photographer. Is she in Maine or? No, she's, I think she's in California, but she's originally from Australia, Mm -hmm. but she has a huge educational component. She teaches a lot and I do a lot of her trainings and I just really love her portraiture. It's just beautiful. Um, So she's probably one of my greatest influences. So when you're watching those videos on the plane, sometimes they're of her. Sometimes they are. Videos. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I've been getting into uh, Brooke Shaden recently, who I wouldn't, she's more of a creative than a photographer. Mm -hmm. So she uses photography as her medium, but I wouldn't call her like a stellar photographer. And she, I don't think she'd call herself that either, but she's a phenomenal like Photoshop artist. And so she basically has created a medium of art that she takes pictures of herself and Photoshops different pieces in together and creates these really beautiful pieces of art. So interesting to use Photoshop well is quite a skill. It's really cool. So I've, I probably spent, you know, my whole, I just went, came back from Europe and I spent a lot of time on the plane and in hotels and yeah. uh, probably 20 hours of Brookshade and wow. training. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's good. I came back all I inspired. Bet. Of course. I bet. That's exciting. Yeah. And you can bring that to your customers. I do. I do. And we also spend a lot of time going to art museums. My husband and I love to look at art. And so that's another thing that I have incorporated this year is bringing in some of the more traditional elements of portraiture that you know Rembrandt used mm. and some of the the great painters and great artists mm. of the world have used and really studying that stuff and bringing that into our portraiture.
there. So there, I actually just took a picture of my stepfather that was very inspired wow, by Rembrandt. I love um, that. It's such an art outlet, basically, photography. It's, yeah. Yeah. There's so much more to it than, it's my yeah, video. it's your medium. Exactly. Thank yeah. you. It's, yeah. That's the, that's the word for. I was looking for. <laughs> there's just so much more yeah. to it than a lay person would ever imagine. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a passion. And yeah, yeah, and there's no limits to the creativity. So that's why you say, I keep learning new stuff, yeah. bring in new yeah. elements. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And new inspiration. Again, like sure. I, I feel like visiting art museums, really, I usually leave very, very inspired. So whatever we go to, a, you know, a new city, no matter where it is in the world, the first thing we do is look for the art museum. <laughs> yeah, I, I really pay attention to the artist's use of light and the posing. And, yeah. you know, I just in Madrid and just looked at some of the art and I just made the the connection, I'm like, none of these people are smiling. Mm. Like, you know, it's floors and floors of huh. beautiful, world-renowned artwork. And I was like, you know what? There's not one smile in this whole gallery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just one of those realizations that, you know, old school portraiture, they don't, they're not smiling. I think for, for photographs, the really old ones, it, it would take so long, right? That it was hard to hold a yes, smile. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but but even with just the paintings. Like, yeah. But I wonder if they went off photographs or something. <laughs> well, they didn't, but they had models standing oh, there yes. too. They so. can't smile forever. But they could have had them, you yeah, know, they could that, have. That's such an um, interesting thing to notice. Yeah. yeah I bet that's yeah. true. And a lot of portraits, older ones that I'd never picked yeah, up on that. Yeah. And I came home and I ended up asking a woman to sit with her child in a very old school painting kind of way and you know, photographed her very painterly and edited it very painterly mm -hmm. and it's a picture of mother and child it was really inspired off of you know some of the art that oh, I that so I viewed neat. while I was away and she's Neat. You're not looking at the camera. Are you going to post like, that on your Facebook page by any chance? Yeah, or? it's actually, it's probably out there. Okay. It's probably about a month so old. So it's wants a little bit of scrolling back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll probably, when you get to it, you'll be like, oh, this is right. probably what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, looks like, it looks like, you know, what you would envision old school painting to look like. So, so is there a next step for you or a dream you would like to accomplish in photography? Or That's funny um, because I didn't, I never dreamed right. of this. Do you know what I mean? Right. You, so it's just, you are at that next step currently, it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's just a matter of probably just pushing the bounds of creativity. I really do enjoy that and and continuing learning, always learning. Learn. Yeah. Yeah, always learning and you know, continuing to create beautiful portraiture for our families and you know, there's always a temptation to, with photography and with everything. I'm sure there's a trend, you know, there's sort of trendy edits and we try to stick with sort of a very classic approach to photography so that our pictures don't look dated oh. in years. So trying to just resist the temptation to edit in a way that is would that will look like it's you know, from 2019 yeah, right <laughs> you know right, they'll be able to um, spot it that's 2019 yeah, to provide, so yeah, classic oh, portraiture yeah. for that will be just timeless, timeless for the families that we photograph because we do take it seriously to be a family's historian oh, i so. love that that's such a unique way to look at it but there you will stand the test of time yeah and i do i mean we can play with edits on our like creatively, you know, like I do a lot of stuff creatively and I can play with fun edits and film like edits and in the fine art realm. But for portraiture, I feel like it should just be very timeless. Mm, love that. Just like jeans. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Great analogy. Perfect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, Aaron, it's been great having you on this podcast today. I feel like we both learned a lot about your career and a career as a photographer. If anyone is interested, and having great photography work done or a photo shoot or would like photography lessons, please reach out to Erin at Mercy Street Studio. The links will be in our show notes. Thank you very much for having me. It's been an honor. I appreciate it being here. So thank you. It's been so fun talking to you. It's been great to getting to hear all about your, your business and your career and such an inspiration. And Bobby had just written down as a final thing, sort of a quote on you. Erin is a mother of four. She is passionate about orphan advocacy see chocolate and Jesus. Does that sum it up for you? Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, we love that. And thanks so much for doing the podcast. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Have a good day. Thank you too. Bye-bye. Aaron is an amazing woman, raising young kids, working full-time while getting her bachelor's and master's, not to mention graduating with a 4.0. Seriously, she is clearly a motivated and smart woman. I love her adoption story and how that propelled her into her career as a photographer. Yeah, that is a great story. I really admire how she's a constant learner. She is clearly passionate about what she does, and that passion comes through in her photos. 
Yes, it certainly does. I really think anyone who is looking to get into photography as a career will have learned a lot from listening to this podcast. Yes, and if anyone wants to learn more, please find all of Erin's contact information in the show notes. Also, if you are still with us, we want to thank you so very much for listening. Have a great day. And as a final note, anyone interested in learning more about our business, academic and career advising services, we invite you to visit our website and we will include that link in the show notes. We assist people with changing careers, possibly finding that first job out of college, the college admissions process, selecting an academic major, deciding on a career, or things of that nature. You can check it all out on our website, Academic and Career Advising Services. We are located in Kennebunk, Maine. However, for your convenience, we also offer video conferencing services. You're never too old to change your career or to go back to college, and you're never too young to begin thinking about your future. We enjoy serving people of all ages. If you enjoyed listening to today's podcast and would like to help us out, could you please leave a rating or review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts? This really helps others to find our podcast. We would greatly appreciate it. Also, to get all the latest on upcoming episodes, please follow us on social media. All of those links will be included in the show notes. Thank you and have a great day. Thanks so much for listening.